okay, maybe you had a passion for drums, but it's not necessarily like you had a passion for drumming. You had a passion for music in general. Yeah, which, exactly. Which and, is, and that's, you need that's, all the tools. That's so. where anybody asks me, like, what's your favorite instrument? My answer is always, I'm a musician. My favorite instrument is music. Is the one I've got in my hand. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> right. it's like, it's more like a language for me than it is a, a hobby or a craft. It's that's like, a great way to put it. So today we sat down with Trevor Contois to kick off this podcast. Um, we started talking about, you know, everything from his childhood growing up in a music shop uh, all the way to where he is right now starting his new company, but also where he's going. We get into the details on a little bit of his life journey, what's crafted, the direction in life he chose to go in the music industry, as well as uh, like the morning routine and the things that really make him productive as an individual now. It was a really, really insightful uh, conversation. We all really had a lot of fun with it. Um, I think you guys are going to like it. So uh, let's sit down with Trevor. Hey, buddy. Hey, Cam. How's it going? (laughs) (laughs) Frick, we're off to a strong start. Dude. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, absolutely. First guys, of all, have you ever been on a podcast before? I, you know, I've never been on an actual podcast. I've been on multiple radio shows, so I don't think that counts. It's more nothing, pro- more professional than a nothing, podcast. Nothing that was posted. <laughs> nothing that was posted on the YouTube or or Spotify or anything like that. But like, well, this will be on all of Apple those. Podcast. Here we come. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> yeah, live stuff. I guess is the better way yeah, to say yeah, that. Yeah. Oh no, we're definitely doing Apple Podcasts. Yeah, sweet, and whatever else. I think cool. yeah. the list is long. Trevor, uh, when when you were a kid, what did uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? Honestly, man, th- that's a hard question because my childhood, like, you know, I would always screw around with a bunch of things. My dad, of course, ran a music store and he sold things, so it was impossible to not kind of be around instruments although I was really reluctant to actually take one on and start learning how to play one um I always was interested in music it's not like like everybody's interested in music but like playing music and and actually being a musician was something I didn't know if I wanted to do until I really got to middle school and then like I picked up the drums and the drums were a lot more fun than the piano was so you can attest to that. True. And, and I can't play piano though. Yeah, but, but <laughs> you probably tried at some point and then hated it. That's true. Yeah. I can play two songs. Actually. Yeah, exactly. I can play so, Jealous and. I mean, I do play the piano, Lord of the Rings, <laughs> and that's it. But yeah, the uh, the I I fell in love with drums and bass, and then from there picked up guitar, piano, started producing. Um, now just getting around to vocalizing. Um, which is a whole different beast, but yeah, I mean, my, my interest in music really grew with, with myself, you know, over the years throughout middle school and high school, as I matured, I realized that music was something that was more of a calling for me. And it's kind of like life without music is really, I I can't imagine what it would be like now. Um, whereas, you know, when we were all kids, it's like, you you don't really know. Sometimes you feel like you want to be an NFL star. Sometimes you want to feel like you want to be a rock star or a doctor because doctors make lots of money. (laughs) But, (laughs) but yeah, I, I think, you know, music, I, I feel like I've made the right choice of course. And, and it's become, you know, much more than just a passion for me, but really it's, it embodies my life. So you've always kind of, kind of wanted, wanted music in your life yeah i mean how could you not every single one of us has music in our life uh sound in our life there's not a day that goes by without you know us realizing something that sounds good or sounds bad and now i've just taken an interest in making sure that i can make the stuff that we like and instead of the the things we don't (laughs) yeah right well so you've always lived here like you've always lived in like Essex, right? Yeah. So, I mean, well, my, my mom lives in South Burlington. So I, I actually went back and forth between the school districts. Um, but you know, Burlington, South Burlington and Essex has, has been my home. Um, of course, you know, I've, I've been to places like, you know, LA, I stayed there for a while. Um, but you know, Vermont, you, you know what the music scene is like because of all the social media and stuff from everywhere. But, but Vermont has a really interesting vibe to it because, You know, it's everybody thinks it's so little, um, but there really is a lot of opportunity here for for people to actually grow in their industry. And especially with the Internet and stuff like that and and the way social media and everything is going. I mean, there's not a better time than now to really get into something like audio or or what you guys are doing, video and and just the arts in general. Yeah. So. Grow, you grew up in a mu- in a music store, like yeah, pretty much, because you were homeschooled, weren't you? Well, so I went to public school uh, until after freshman year. 
Okay. Yes. And then I finished online. So not, I guess I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't call it homeschooled. My parents never really had an involvement. That was more of a me decision to, to really take it into my own hands and, and get that done. Yeah. Um, also I just, you know, the high school scene at the time, like I'm not into drugs. So, <laughs> but it's, it, it's, it's hard. Um, you know, I saw like Vermont just got rated like the highest, like drug infested state in the country. And, and, yeah. and the, uh, you know, 25% or more of high school seniors have done like hard, like opioid and like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's a mess. Um, so yeah, DL, I, <laughs> yeah, I definitely, <laughs> for me, it, that was, that was definitely part of the decision as well as just my focus. You know, I felt like school and the school curriculum didn't really help me focus on what I needed to be focusing on. So know? it was your decision to be, uh, we'll say self-educated. Yeah. Rather yeah than exactly. Your parents. Online. Yeah, 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 exactly. Which is cool. Speaking of which, did you teach yourself instruments? Well, first of all, what instru what instruments do you play? So, because okay. it's pretty much everything except for wind, right? Yeah, I mean, it's I like to say like the middle school band teacher level. Uh, we won't we don't need to count all those because of course, like you know, I can I can now sit down and play like Mary had a little lamb on a whole bunch of instruments, but the <laughs> ones the ones that I can do comfortably. Uh, I'll say just, you know, the drums. xylophone, the recorder. Oh, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> so, so yeah, definitely drums, bass, piano, guitar. Um, and, and then of course, you know, percussion fits in there everywhere, but you know, I dabbled in the sitar, which is an in Indian instrument. I can do a lot on that guy, but, but other than that, um, yeah, I, I spent like a solid, like two months just trying to, I don't know why that was, that was definitely a phase, but um, you know, other than that, it's like, you know, there are a whole bunch of instruments out there that are kind of like very similar to any of those things that I just listed that you can get sound out of, but yeah. And it, it, see now it's like anybody who doesn't know you is going to be like, Oh wow. He's got the ability of a middle school teacher, but you actually shred <laughs> on everything well, that you well, just mentioned. Well, yeah. So, so, so yeah, the, the, no, I said the middle school band teacher level is like things like clarinet flute I, I can do i can play those you can if you manage ask, those. if you hand me a violin i can play mary had a little lamb like a boss okay I see. And <laughs> anything else i have put considerable hours into as far yeah. as drums bass piano guitar yes yeah no that's that's definitely a more professional <laughs> level i guess if, yeah, right. if you please gotcha so anyway um have you taught any of those instruments to yourself so I definitely picked up bass by myself. I've never taken a bass lesson in my life. Really? Because um, that's one of your main. I feel yeah, like drums and that, bass are That like was your my guys. first one. Drums, I taught myself for a few years and then decided that it was such a different instrument that it's like you kind of need some guidance um, from a good mentor. So I actually took lessons from um, this older guy, Jeff Salisbury. He was the UVM professor of percussion and, and drums. Um, he just recent, re recently retired, actually. But... But he was great. I mean, he, he gave me a lot of direction as far as drumming goes. And because it's such, it's such a different beast, you know, it's like a lot of instruments, you know, with pitch and stuff like that are alike. But drums doesn't have pitch. It's all just about the feeling of it and the rhythm of it, which is why I love it so much. Um, but yeah, that was that was drums is really the only instrument I took lessons for. Gotcha. Yeah. So did you ever at a certain point say like, or I, I guess you did, but at what point were you like, this is what I'm doing is I'm going to do this music and audio thing, man. I mean, I had aspirations of, you know, doing sports and stuff like that, like through, throughout middle school. I think really, um, the end of middle school is, is when I really made that decision. Um, you know, toward, towards the end is I was like, you know, I, I should be spending more time on these things if I really want to get good at them. Um, kind of a hypocrite because that's where I was like, I should focus on music and not other things so I can get good at music. But now inside of music, I'm focusing on like 20 different things. And it's like, I, <laughs> yeah, well. you know, I could get really good at one of them, but I just can't give any of them up. I love them too much. You know, that, that's where I'm coming from is like, I kind of, some days I feel like, do I regret it for not spending all these hours that I've spent producing bass, piano, guitar on just becoming a, like a sick drummer instead of being like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm good at the drums. Like, I don't want to sound like I have an ego, but I am good at the drums. But, I, you know, obviously if I put all those hours in, I could have been, you know, better, crazy. Yeah. At the drums. <laughs> but like, but I feel like, you know, I, I also really value the other education that I've had and all the things that I've learned how to do. And it's, it's nice to kind of, you know, be able to do all those things and not have to, you know, find random people to do them whenever I need somebody. You know? Yeah. Right. Well, and I think, you know, deep down it's like, okay, maybe you had a passion for drums, but it's not necessarily like you had a passion for drumming. You had a passion 
for music in general. Yeah, which, exactly. Which and, is, and that's, you need that's, all the tools. That's so. where anybody asks me, like, what's your favorite instrument? My answer is always, I'm a musician. My favorite instrument is music. Is the one I've got in my hand. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> right. it's like, it's more like a language for me than it is a, a hobby or a craft. It's that's like, a great way to put it. Yeah, it's it's like it's kind of you embody it, and there are many different ways to express language. There's poetry. There there's singing, of course. There there's podcast um <laughs> but it's like we talk and that's how we communicate and, and music is just another form of communication and so is sound i mean you're talking about audio and just sound design uh film scoring and everything like that it's really just a whole another mode of communication and i like to use the word prosody which means you know you're basically every little piece of a of art is working together to achieve a goal um, and sound is a big part of that. You know, you're, you filming, you can do all this film work, have a great looking movie and truly ruin it with a horrible soundtrack or That's horrible fact. sound design. You guys know uh, that. Oh yeah. And oh, the yeah, same yeah. thing. <laughs> and the same have a thing. Good video without good audio. Yeah. You guys, you guys have probably heard like some soundtracks that are really good, but they're in horrible movies, whether the, the script is horrible. I mean, that's, that's where I'm coming from or, or sorry. Audio I mean, makes your brain. Yeah, really. Video. You guys have probably, sorry, I should say you, you've seen really good shots and terrible movies. That's kind of what it's, what oh, it's yeah, like, what sure. it's like for me, you know, like people say movies are terrible at the end of the day. It's just about everything working together to really make, make it feel the way it does. That's true. My top, like probably five movies are like my top five soundtracks. Yeah. You know, like Lord of the Rings is at the top. Oh, Fo- soundtrack is amazing. Footloose, really? Or are you just saying that because <laughs> oh, of church man. today? Yeah, no, okay. I played that this morning. But um, <laughs> I do like that movie a lot. It is a good movie. But Kevin Bacon, come on our show. <laughs> <laughs> no, but dude, like um, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Amazing soundtrack. That's a great soundtrack. Inception. Yeah. Unreal. Wow. Like, and those are like probably my top three, you yeah. know? Um, yeah, especially you know, for soundtracks. You know, it's really good when you get a song, like a scored soundtrack from a movie that doesn't even have lyrics and it like becomes like, when you hear this, yeah, right? you know exactly what I'm doing. And yeah. It's like, it's like they, they literally just, uh, they hit that on the nail the for themes. like, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's a good example of, of a soundtrack that truly serves its movie. Like that makes you feel like you're a pirate just listening to that soundtrack. And it's like, that is such a good example of prosody. Like I, I think that's that's one of my favorite actually. Now that you mention it, is mm-hmm. because and even that in Star Wars, you know, oh, I sure. think of all the good music in Star Wars. That's like I've never seen Star Wars. Okay. Me neither. <laughs> well, what? No way. But but I but I guarantee you. See, here's my example though. Is if I sing. Dun, 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 oh, dun, yeah. Dun, oh yeah. Uh, see, we know what it is. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. And you haven't even seen the movie. So, so <laughs> the music the music can stand good on its own and be Star Wars. <laughs> that's right. Without the movie even being good. So you yeah. know what I mean? Like that's an example of like that music makes you think Star Wars, and that that's a great soundtrack. That's so funny. Yeah, that's facts. Um, do you have like a? Would you ever do movies? Would I? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I love scoring. Uh, For I, the right price, will do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. No, it's 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 more about. For me, it's about feeling like the movie that I would be scoring for has some kind of excitement to it, whereas the soundtrack could serve it. You know, I feel like there's there's a lot of movie soundtracks that you don't even notice that they're there, and I don't, I don't, I don't really like those as. That's much, like Inception. Know? It's well, Inception is more. It it is actually you do notice it's there because it makes you feel something. You oh, know? Okay. whereas whereas think of it. You mean like, like something with no feeling? The type of a movie I wouldn't like to do is think like Home Alone or something like that. Oh, which, which yeah. is like oh, yeah. The, the, okay. I mean the soundtracks are good, but like it, it's almost like you know they're all just like a bunch of stringy like happy go lucky songs, and I'm like I, I don't think I'd want to do that. But I, that I think, and but I think like, like Blade Runner type stuff, more like special effects stuff, crazy. Yeah, more than scores. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah Foley, just Foley is a whole different thing too. Yeah. Foley is is really cool. I'm not in that industry whatsoever, but I've seen some some dope guys and videos and stuff on people making sounds out of things that you wouldn't think would make those sounds. Yeah, people are good at that stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole, that's like a, like industry that's art. art. Yeah. In we got to find somebody who does, I who mean, does fully. Yeah. yeah the crazy. thing is, is, it was way cooler like 50 years ago because now it's like, oh, this is fully like, watch, I can make this pad sound like a drum kit. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
I think like it, other other than that, yeah. I mean, that's not Foley for anybody who thinks <laughs> yeah, it is. That's pretty real. That's, no, Foley that's, is like that's called. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Well, that might be ASMR, but <laughs> but the <laughs> but but Foley is yeah. It's 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 definitely an art form in itself. I love it. How, where where are you on the ASMR train, dude? You're talking about sounds and audio. Oh, like. dude, I I can't believe people. I'm like, isn't that insane? Some of it, I was like, okay. If you want to con- like consider ASMR, I don't know like, what that is. Really? What, oh, it, what dude, is it what does it stand fast. for? Audio is probably it, something no, about stimulation. I something don't know. sensory. Yeah, I, I don't know. So I, ASMR, I, I feel like an idiot for saying this on the internet right now that I don't know what it is. If but. you well, if you like go on the internet and you look up ASMR, it's like people who are like whispering into microphones uh, and like like today. I'm going to scratch yeah. my beard with my hand. No. And then it's just like sounds. Yeah, seriously. There it is some really so weird. weird. No, there's like one of like some dude eating corn that's really popular. Like he's just <laughs> chewing on a on a head of corn. Or it's just supposed it's like, to be like satisfying noises. Yeah. Autonomous sensory mm-hmm. meridian response. Yeah, that's it. So it's basically the feeling you get. The, yeah, so it's, it's <laughs> yeah. ASMR actually pertains to the feeling that you get when you hear a certain sound. It's not yeah. necessarily the act of like making it or like the, oh, what see. it is but basically like like you hear people when they hear something that's really nice they'll say asmr you know it's because because it means you're getting that yeah. feeling that you get from listening to something like actually uh, a form of asmr is just bad asmr is nails on a chalkboard yeah, yeah. Oh, there's oh, nothing yeah. there's nothing else you get from that you know like it's a bad response but like can you really think of anything else that makes you feel like that not really. Yeah, I you know, know. it's right. like the nails on the chalkboard feeling is, is crazy. Here, here's but, the official Wikipedia definition: sometimes, autosensory meridian response is a tingling sensation that typically begins on the scalp and moves down the back of your neck and upper spine. A pleasant form of paresthesia has been compared to auditory tactical. So holy big words yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> may overlap with frisian. What? Screw med school. I don't know. Watch what, our podcast. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, listen to <laughs> that is Or just yeah, watch ASMR. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, yeah anyways, it, uh, so a feeling. It gets yeah, weird. Yeah, it gets exactly. weird fast. No, it's really weird. Okay, so you're into the making yeah, I know, don't, people I don't, feel things from I, music. But I don't, <laughs> but, yeah, like, no, I like, I believe in music and audio's power to make people feel things, but I'm not like, I don't do that in, in a weird way. Yeah. There are many weird things out there, but like... All the power to people, you know, that's, that's the thing is we have ears, we're blessed with ears, um, you know, use them and, and they, they, they can do very good things. I mean, it's like music makes you feel good. Sound makes you feel good. It can also make you feel really bad, but, um, just look at dogs when you play really high sounds, you know, they were built with different ears than we have. Yeah. True. Um, or in movie scores, you, sometimes it makes you feel something and you don't even know you're hearing it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of the point of a good score, isn't it? Right. I wanted to talk to you about this, and I keep forgetting. Um, I learned this from Disney, and actually, I was just thinking about it yesterday because I tried to do it with the Night to Shine video. What Disney does, you know, why Disney like makes you cry like all the time in like these in like toy like end of Toy Story three when I thought it was like the end. Have you seen Toy Story three? I have. When they're all like barreling into like the fire, I'm like, it's the end. I'm like tearing up, dude. Like yeah. not actually, but I like want to, I'm like choked up. The emotions are. Yeah. Hitting. And it's genius what they do. Okay. So what, what Disney does and why they uh, like take so much emotion in these like cartoons yep. um, is that they associate, like associate a track with a happy feeling in the beginning. Yep. And then at the end, when things are like serious and sad, yeah. they use the same track and it just rips you apart. Uh, it's the same song. Yeah. It's the same yeah. score. It's not like a sad song. Yeah. It's like that same song just kind of mellowed down. Yeah. So that's it. This is a reinterpretation. I've actually, I've done a lot of study into video game music because it's the same thing. It's, mm. it's the, what we call a certain line or something in, in the music, like in the scoring world is like a motif, right? Um, and you can use that motif, right? Like actually a good example was, uh, I actually, I don't know if I loved the movie, but I saw it with Cam frozen Two. Um, <laughs> they had this, they, it, it's a really clear example for somebody to understand like a scores use, uh, usage of this. Um, they have this little, remember the, remember the high voice. Da, 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 da. Yeah. See, yeah. Cam even remembers it. That shows how good it is. Right. And, and the thing is, is they used it throughout the movie. 
Um, and I'm not going to give any spoilers here, but basically they use <laughs> it's it. It's frozen too. They, you could probably they, spoil yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They, they use it, they use it in the happy parts of the uh, soundtrack and they use it in the sad parts too. And they use that same motif and they repeat it. And because once you build that sense of familiarity, Connection. Um, exactly. The, the songs and, and the scores and the scenes really can take on a whole new meaning because, and that's all the thing is, is you can make me, you know, you can make those feelings in the music by doing several different things. I can change the harmony because I can put a chord under something and that, that chord will make a note feel very different than, a, than this chord, you know, and, and each chord will make the certain note have its own feeling. Um, and in the same way, you know, what Disney does is, you know, I could use high, really nice, clean sounding clarinets to make it sound really happy in the beginning. And then I can use dark cellos and basses and things like that and huge percussion in the end with the same melody and just speed it up, slow it down, stuff like that, you know, to, to make it feel different. And that, and that, that is a common trick is, is that reinterpretation of the, of the music. Um, and it's, and it's done a lot like when these scorers are really trying to pull out a certain feeling in a scene, uh, like even the, what I was saying about the video game music is like, you know, 8-bit has come a long way, you know, and I think one of my favorite things is they've uh, taken old video games and they're starting to remake a lot of them, right? And that, if, if I were to tell anybody who's interested in film or video game music or even just music in general and wanting to know how like, you know, if the feeling of music can be brought about like we're talking about right now, like go look at some of those remakes because they are doing such a good job with them. Like they're taking in the olden days, they had these like what, what like the Game Boys and stuff like that, that the sound cards, like I think the, the whole soundtrack could only be like six meg mm -hmm. of data. And, and so what that means is to stick it in there, they had to have literally no more than three sounds playing at a time. Hmm. for the whole thing and that means like each one only gets one note at a time no no one sound can be playing chords so if you're playing chords those three notes have to be making up the chords and then they had a little white noise track that sounded like a drum so like if you think the mario ever, the whole mario theme is that whole like four things and it's crazy because now like what they've done with those songs and like full like 250 piece orchestras and like you know, Just EDM type soundtrack. Parts. Exactly. It's, it's crazy. But the thing is, is what, that, what those guys relied on and what's a really, you know, it's a good tactic moving forward. Even it's, it's easy to get distracted by all this technology that we have today and trying to make things sound cool before you really get down to the grassroots and create a line that's catchy. Like Cam just railed off that frozen line, <laughs> and and I didn't, you know, I was about, I was about Please to do don't it. Judge me. I was about to do it. But the thing is, is the fact that Cam knows that line. He's probably you've seen the movie once. Uh, yeah. Right. Ha once. Yeah. And, and he hasn't really heard anything of it probably since, you That's know, he's, they've talked true. about it, but he hasn't seen any scenes, maybe a few, but the thing is, is like, he knows that line. Yeah, and, it's, and it's there. Yeah, and and that's how good it was. It's like you you write a good line, a catchy line that really serves the purpose of your movie. Well, you're you're gonna have success writing writing those scores. Yeah, what do you think about um, you know another tactic that tactic that people use um, in movies is like each character has like a like a two or three or four like a, bar like thing. a motif for their own. Yeah, yeah and like every time you yeah. see them, you hear that. Yep. Um, they yeah. do that really well in Lord of the Rings. So yeah. I'm a yeah. huge Lord of the Rings no, fan. Exactly. So, no, uh, for sure. It's, it's definitely true. The Incredibles is a good one for that too. Oh, but do they do I, that? I love the, I love the incredible soundtrack. Yeah. They have all, well, this, every kind of like superhero type sure. thing, like there's a villain theme and there's a, oh yeah, yeah. there's a hero's theme and, and you always have like the, the little rings and jingles that they have and stuff like that. And that's all great because the thing is, is you stick that into into a song, you can do some cool things with it. And that's, I, I love how infinite the world of music and scoring is because no one decision is necessarily the perfect decision. There's no such thing as perfect. And, and so many people try and chase that, but there's like a million different things that they could have done that would have been awesome. Yeah. And so it's cool to see certain people, how they approach it uh, compared and, to others. And I find it interesting that you've done so much research on like video game music. Cause yeah. do you play video games? Not a lot. I, I mean, didn't think I, so. I definitely did as a kid, and that's what kind of influenced me to remember that it was so good. Like, actually, huh. I, I realize now that the games I played as a kid were only because of music. I would I would mm. watch my brother play games a lot, 
And and the only reason is because I would like try and like drum along with the music later, and I'd like <laughs> interesting like like Sonic the Hedgehog like has this like blasting rock soundtrack, <laughs> and and like it's awesome, like it's so fun to play along with, and they've got all these like musicians just going crazy over it. Even the new like I literally like I heard like I overheard my little cousins or something playing Mario Kart Eight. And the new soundtrack is like, cause I'm used to hearing like Mario Kart in the, in the past. Like I loved the music, but it was all, you know, that eight bit stuff that I was talking about had to be really compressed and all, but the new Mario Kart, they just like, it's all like real instruments and like jazz yeah. combos and like crazy stuff. It's like, and the, and the great thing about that is like I said, prosody, like each song fits the stage, which sure. I love that. It's almost like that's such a good way to learn film scoring because if you're writing for like a beach scene or something, there's a beach level in Mario Kart and it's like, <laughs> it, they do oh, such a good job face. of making, like if you listen to the music, you're like, I'm at a beach. That's exactly wow. what you would think. Yeah. And, and it's awesome. I've actually done, I've run my own kind of like tests on that too, just to test like, you know, how good is this video game music actually? Like I'll take a level from Mario Kart or, or even a different game, Call of Duty, whatnot. It doesn't matter. But I'm like, where are you? You know, like, where, where does this song put you? You know, without the visuals, what does this feel like? You know, and, and that's, that's the big thing is a lot of those games are really trying to make you feel like you're part of the experience, just like a movie would most of the time. Right. But, like, you know, video games especially, like, the, the biggest way to hook somebody on a video game is to make that person who's playing it feel like that's them. And it's like, if you can, if you, can you know, submerse them in that world through, of course, visuals and music, you know, everything works together and, and really achieves success there. If you think about inspiration, really just in music, especially, it's like you can look to, you know, who's the best player, but you can also just be like, who do I want to be like? You know, whose attitude do I want to embody um, throughout my you know, childhood, especially up through really the present? Uh, I've lacked a lot of confidence. So I was like looking at people who just embody confidence. Right. Um, and it's like, who got me? And I'm by no means the most confident person. I'm really like, that's one of the things I've really been working on the past few weir- years is, is just getting better at, you know, being confident and being myself and, and trying to show that. Um, but like, you know, all through the years, there's so many different musicians that it's like, I like this about them. I like this about them. I like this about them. So if you told me to name one, um, it'd be really hard. I don't think I could do that. All right, um, you're 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 the it, average of the, but, the five people you spend if, the most if, time. If you want to, yeah, if you want to really name a whole lot, I mean, you you got to start out with Kim K. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you definitely got to you you definitely like Bruno Mars is crazy. Yeah, I think the guy yeah, you is, talk about- is mega talented. Um, if you're talking the past few years, um, it, in my childhood, I loved Michael Jackson. You know, he's a guy like it's not like I'd ever want to dance like him, but he's a guy <laughs> that's like his music feels good. Um, who doesn't like listening to Michael Jackson? Um, okay. <laughs> Cam, <laughs> that's, he's that's not, not my it. favorite either, but you can have an yeah, appreciation no, for him. Like, no. and, and Michael but, Jackson, but what, I, but, well, yeah. but what I mean, what I'm saying is like, you don't hate listening to Michael Jackson. Maybe it's not, it doesn't have to be anybody's choice, choice music. Right. And I, like I know some people hated my MJ as a person. Right. But I'm talking specifically music, his yeah. artwork. Right. And, and I don't, you know, there's, again, the people that I look to as inspiration for who they are as people is completely different than who I look to for their craft <laughs> is what I'm saying. I'm impressed by Michael Jackson's talent. I'm impressed by Bruno Mars's talent, right? As people, it's hard. I mean, you have certain people that you look up to. Um, and in fact, a lot, you know, a lot of those have even, have even been sports figures and, and stuff like that, that I, I sometimes look at and I just love the way that they, they show poise and confidence. Um, and it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, the music community has so many people that are, you know, so confident and yet so, you know, they, they focus on themselves and they really know how to just channel their passion and put it into what they're doing. Um, and that's, that's a hard thing to find. You know, I, one thing that people always tell me and it's something that is always resting on my mind is I, to this point have really not come up with my own original music. And it's hard to believe because, you know, as far as I've done so much studying in, in lyric, in writing, in music, in harmony, in producing, you know, but, but I still to this day have not yet been, been able to feel comfortable about making something that I could put my name behind just because it's almost like I, I a hold myself to a standard, but B feel like I haven't really connected with who, who I am as a musician and a writer, you know, and that, that's the tough part is 
it's really good to find those inspirations, but I feel like I almost haven't nailed down who those people are. You know, do you think you you're starting to get a grasp on who you are as a producer? Yeah, I mean, uh, as a producer, as a musician, as as a writer, what whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think the more I I age and the more it kind of settles down, you realize that a you don't have forever, right? And it's almost like you know, I'm not upset that I'm 19 and haven't released my own music. That's still pretty <laughs> young. Um, but but my point is is it's like you know you and and it's not about seeing on the internet of course you see on the internet all these like child prodigies and stuff like that and you're like huh but but at the same time it's like it doesn't matter when you start of course uh you know i would i would be happy if i found myself at 60 and started releasing music it's not necessarily about about the time that you do it it's it's just about making sure that when you do it you're genuine about it um and that again i think it goes with any art i think what i'm saying really resonates through through any passion any art is that once you commit to something and, and you really want to show yourself through that, you have to be confident and you have to be, you know, you have to be confident in that it's you, you know, that, that's not just my music. It's not my music. This is, this is a representation of who I am, uh, what I stand for, the experiences I've had. And of course, you know, when, when you make music and release music, the goal of that is to relate to people and to have them be able to use your music to help them in some way too. Right. You've got to be, influenced obviously but you've got to be authentic and create your own yeah exactly and i think you know i i of course in everything i've done you always hear other people spin on it you know it's like the thing is, is all the music that we create comes from inside our head and how does it get inside our head we listen to it yeah, right. so <laughs> it's, else, it's yeah. like you know everything you've heard is just a combination of really cool things i mean i actually you know i i don't like a lot of the new artists that come out as people um, but the music really does connect with people. And I think, you know, Absolutely. it's, it's for some reason, uh, you know, that the top, the top 50 charts or whatever, um, you know, it's filled with things that, you know, a lot of the adult generation will say, you know, it's garbage. And, and, and I think that's an unfair assumption because maybe the people are garbage. Sometimes that is the absolute truth. Um, and, and, you know, you see all these guys like getting arrested. It doesn't help their case, you know? <laughs> um, but like, the thing is, is, is you have to understand that there's a difference between the person and the art, although they are putting out what's, what's accurately them most of the time. Um, but the music industry is a weird place. You know, it's, it's, there's so many different kinds of people. There are people that started, did something like I'm, I'm probably going to do cause I don't have a major label behind me or anything like that, or, or millions of dollars to promote my music. I, I have to do it, you know, just, you know, from who I am, I, I have to start from scratch, but, but sometimes, you know, there are other people in the industry who of course been able to, you know, take advantage of the opportunities that they were given. Um, and, and there's all sorts of different kinds of people. Um, and, and some of them are super talented, some of them are not, but at the end of the day, it's like, it's not a, really about the talent of the indi individual. It's, it's more just about whether or not your music resonates with people and connects with people. And, and whether your art connects with people, it's, it's it, not right. even, it, it's some of the dirtiest, filthiest, nastiest songs, yeah, but sometimes. boy, they're, they got a jam. Exactly. Well, so, <laughs> some feel good. Yeah. yeah. So on that, like something that I find really interesting, whenever I'm talking mm. to people in older generations, yep. you know, the, the generations that would yeah. say our music sucks, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, the people that do have an appreciation mm -hmm. for the music we listen to, they all talk about Post Malone. Yeah. They're like, Post Malone is and, a genius. And here's the thing is, is I think, and I was just going to get to that too, because the people who I mentioned, Bruno Mars, uh, Michael Jackson, and even Post, I, I think is, is a really good example of this. Um, their music is something I like to call accessible because there, there is, there's music for sure that the older generations say is garbage. And then there is music that we say is garbage from the older generation. So, yeah, so right. it's, it's true. I mean, we, you know, there's, a, there's a, not a lot of open-minded kids, just like the, the parents and, and true. adults are open-minded. Um, so it's like, you know, you, you can, you can look at it both ways. Like the adults can say the kids, Oh, the kids think our music is garbage. They're, they're closed minded. And then of course the kids say that the adults are closed minded for not liking the new music. And it's, and it's, it's a catch 22 there, but, but I think there, there are a few people who have really accessible music. And, and that's like, they've hit sure. a line that, you know, that's what I would love to do. It's not necessarily even just about the consumer, but like Bruno Mars, most of his music has reached a, a wide audience and not necessarily, you know, people 
know his music whereas like a lot of these rappers are really just in that scene whereas same thing on the other side like heavy metal it's like is that something that i would want to create no because it's like i don't think that necessarily resonates with with the general public as much as i'd like it to but it is a niche like there's not not knocking on it of course like it's it's something that some people do resonate to maroon five somebody else like typically yeah i mean like wide, yeah. wide again expanded. yeah yeah maroon five has crazy crazy reach as yeah. far as like the demographic like you look at these people and it's like you really don't hear a lot of negativity about them and that that's what i like you know i feel like the thing is, is you always want, everybody wants fame. Everybody wants to be recognized, right? But a lot of these people with the good fame comes just as much bad fame. And I feel like I, if, if I were to shoot for anything, that's not what I want it to be. I want, I want to make sure that whatever I'm doing, I can stand behind it. And it's not, you know, cause I wouldn't have hundreds of swears throughout my, my <laughs> albums because I just feel like that's something that clearly half of the people would be like, why is it even there? Yeah, that's and, true. And I don't, I just, I just don't like that. I don't like dividing people. I, I'm a firm believer in uniting people um, and, and having a sense of community and love between people. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, music, accessible music really makes me happy when, when you see it. Um, because that's like, and, and that, that's inspiring to me. And, and that's why it's hard to give you a person is it's more just the, it's more just the songs. You know, I don't, I don't listen to a song and think about the person who's singing. I, I think about how the song is making me feel and how that inspires me to make a song like that. You know, I'm like, I wish that was mine. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes cool. I listen to music. I'm like, I wish that was my song. I wish I created that uh, because it's so accessible and people love it. So we've talked about a couple of things so far. I mean, we covered music scores, video games, mainstream music, um, Obviously, you're quite knowledgeable in the in the audio space. Uh, but what do you find that you're most excited about? What what where do you want to go? What do you want to produce? Oh uh, man, I mean, you know, in in my heart, it tells me that I'd be the most excited about promoting my my own stuff. Um, but of course, that doesn't exist yet. So I guess we'll we'll take up until now as as the uh, you know <laughs> as, as the sample. Um, you know, of course, I. I really, for me right now, it's about the learning. And I know that sounds kind of lame, but like, I think, you know, typically when I make stuff and, and when I come up with music um, or make music for somebody else, I always approach it with an open mind. Um, and really, I look at it as this is my chance to, to learn how this is constructed. And, and when I hear a song or hear a reference or maybe, cause one, one of the things I've done to really learn a lot is just drag in reference tracks, um, to, to, and be like, you know, I really like the way the drums sound on this. So I want to pull in that sound and try and make it myself because they did it somehow. I think if I just keep listening to theirs and a being it, like going back and forth between this one and this one, um, you can really learn how to do that. And I think that's, you know, it's, it's really been my favorite part of, of music so far is, is just the things that I find out every day, uh, from dissecting this music, you know, like I, I don't, I don't necessarily, I think some people get to this point where they cap off, you know, some artists, especially they get comfortable. Um, they get into some kind of rut. Um, maybe, maybe that's just the, the nine to five and then the weekend warrior type people who just don't have an aspiration to get better. But I think that's, that's what really drives me is every day I wake up and I'm really angry that it's a day has passed and I'm not better than I was. You know, it's like, it's, it's a, uh, it's a rough thing I'm telling you being, being an artist of any kind, um, you all, you consistently are hungry to grow and it's like, I, I don't waste a lot of time anymore, which, which I feel pretty good about. Um, but it's like just growing as a person too. I, I didn't, it took me the longest time to realize that cause I focused on, on music only for a while. Then, then I realized that you have to focus on you as a person too. Like I got really fat <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that, you know, I, I realized, wait a minute, I should probably focus on being healthy too, because that, that plays into that confidence thing and confidence shows through music. So you need, you need to work on that. And um, you did get healthy. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been. I mean, how fat were I, you? I, I mean, <laughs> well, you dropped. I mean, how much did you drop? I've dropped about sixty five pounds. As well, that's now. yeah, that's I'm, significant. Yeah. I mean, look at him, sixty five. Like six, that's a ton. <laughs> yeah, I was I was like I was like two eighteen, two twenty, 
at, at my at my highest point, which was yeah, it was ridiculous. You, I mean, you Good remember probably like basketball. halfway well, between yeah, there. So I kind of wanted to steer the conversation <laughs> back a little bit. Yeah. Um, I had a question before we get to like high school. Yeah. Um, but that was, you know, your brother's a football player. I'm not mm-hmm. really sure what your sister is doing, but your dad owns this music store when you're growing up. Were yeah. you pushed to do music or was he like, you have all this I at mean, your disposal? I had great parents. They were always just supportive of whatever we wanted to do as kids. So you, you know, coming from our family, a lot of people, I mean, my dad was a pretty known musician around Vermont and, and they, you know, you figure when you hear my last name that he would push us to do music, but that wasn't the case at all. You know, Tanner, my brother did not want, he's a musician, of course. Like he, again, he's just like me. When you're around it, you kind of pick it up no matter what. So he plays a little bit of guitar. He's pretty good at it actually. Uh, but that's just for fun. Um, and then like the, the thing is, is, Oh, wait, sorry. What I, I forgot what your question is. I got distracted. Well, were you Let's pushed to do? Were you oh, pushed sorry. to do okay. music? Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, and and because those parents were so supportive, you know, I got to explore a lot of things. You know, of course, I did t-ball. I did soccer. You know, I, I tried to figure out what my passion was, um, and so in no way was I forced to to be a musician. You know, I I picked that up myself. My dad, of course, helped, and and of course, when I told him I wanted to do things and pick up certain things, he would he would help push me in that direction. Um, and, and I'm extremely grateful for that, but yeah, I was never forced or, or really pushed in any way. Yeah, that's cool. Um, you and I met in high school, I think. Yeah, we did. I mean, we, we've kind of like known each other forever. Yeah. I mean, I remember seeing you vaguely. Yeah. So, so what happened is, you know, you know, just for those of you who may not know who Trevor is, I mean, Contoy's music was the music store Mm -hmm. and I mean, it was the one-stop shop. I mean, it was like in the area, that's where you get lessons. That's where you get Yamaha stuff, like Mm -hmm. keyboards, whatever. Um, So as a kid for a few years, I took drum lessons there. Um, And obviously, and that's kind of how we've known each, because we're we're very close to the same age. So it was kind of one of those things where, oh, you have a kid my son's age and and that sort of thing. But in high school is when we um, really met and, you know, I find this interesting because you are a singer, too. Like, you do sing. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I... You may not classify yourself I have as a not, singer. I have not thought I'm very good, but I've been spent, like, for the past... Kid you not, for the past, like, three months, I've been spending, like, two hours a day on it because I'm, like, I'm sick of working with other people because I can't write music and then have my emotion show through, through people who just don't get it. So, yeah. like, I've definitely been working on that. Um, but what I was going to say, you know, along with singing, is when I met you... Your neck was huge. Yeah. You got your thyroid taken out. I did. I had an operation at the end of, you know, at the end of eighth, like, but right before high school. Um, Yeah. And they, uh, yeah, that, that, that contributed really to a lot of the health things because, you know, we don't have to go again. This is not med school, but, but my, (laughs) but, but my point is, is yeah, I mean, I had a very hyperactive thyroid and, and that was causing me to lose a lot of weight. Like before I was a twig. Really, you know, I was I was a huge, I was a little twig, and then when I, um, you know, when I eventually got that surgery, uh, my I had what was called a goiter. My thyroid was five times the size it should have been. I have pictures on my phone. I can show you guys. Sorry, it's I, really funny. No, it's I've seen good. I've seen the pictures. <laughs> yeah, They're crazy. It's, it's it's crazy. It's it's a giant U basically that's yeah. bulging out your neck, and and it you know. Yeah, you had a really bad scar in in freshman. Yeah, year. it's still there. It's just not. Oh as, yeah, it is. It's, it's not as bad. Yeah, of course, it's, it's gone definitely. way down. Right. Um, it's been four years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what happens. Um, but yeah, I mean that that See, this is medical school. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that definitely contributed to the cause of of the you know, the health, the health stuff, the health fluctuations. But, but yeah, I mean, again, it, it was, it was a personal thing too. You know, I, I definitely didn't take it as seriously as I should have. And, and I realized that because, you know, as much as I was focusing on music after that operation and being like, okay, you know, that, that was actually, yeah, it was a turning point for me because being bedridden made me used to being bedridden. And I kind of liked mm. being home alone and not having any responsibilities for four weeks in recovery. Sure. Because when you have neck surgery and you can't move, for a few weeks that gave me an opportunity to realize that hey when i can't move and i don't have responsibilities of of school and friends and stuff like that that i can lock myself in a room and i can get way better at what i'm doing mm. and and i did i mean don't get me wrong i learned a lot over that time period i i you know and i'm not saying 
a, f- a few weeks of recovery. After recovery, I made the decision basically to spend most of my time locked in a room and, and practicing and reading and stuff like that. Um, but again, I let my health go. I, I let my friends go most of the time. And, and it, and it kind of, you know, again, it's big catch 22, but, but I realized that that's a big part of, you know, who you are too and your confidence and everything like that. Yeah. And to be a freshman in high school, especially like, I mean, well, two things on that. A lot of people would sit in recovery and then not do anything. Yeah. You know, not many Just people would, slump, yeah. yeah, not my, and many people would come out saying, I'm going to go work. And, and that's something that I've seen in you is your work ethic is crazy. I mean, you're always I doing stuff. That. No, it's just the truth. Yeah, I, I mean, mean I, I mean, we're going to talk about solely yeah. in a bit. Um, but I mean, that's just, it's just crazy. So anyway, in high school, you know, I knew you freshman year cause we were in band together and then you stopped showing up. Mm-hmm. I was like, <laughs> I wonder where Trevor went. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that what, was a fun year, actually. Band. What? Oh, band. In band? Yeah, I know. Together, yeah, band. You, me, Kip, and yeah, that's <laughs> the crew. really where we all got close. But yeah, but yeah. so it was after freshman year you decided not to go to high school anymore. Yeah, so I <laughs> I, I split it. Um, I did like bio in school, but but I ended up doing like half um, half school in sophomore year, and then uh, all the rest was was online for the rest of high school. Um, so were you still doing it through Essex? Online? So, so technically, I mean, that I, I actually flipped between two different insti- online institutions that both were accredited through Essex. So like, well, of course, not only Essex, but they, they had a bunch of different schools that accepted their credits. Yeah. Um, so Essex was one of those schools. Um, and so, yeah, I got, I got the diploma through Essex. Interesting. Um, but it's not, it was more, you know, my, my counselor would help me out and everything like that. He told me what classes I needed to take, of course, just like everybody did. Yeah. Um, I did the same requirements as any normal student at Essex would do. Um, do you, I, do you have that diploma yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because I remember for a while there, you're like, I got w- one more class or <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> had that stinking English class though. That one and gym, online gym. That was a funny one. Oh, I did. I did online gym, dude. I took online, online. bowling. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? But oh, again, that school. that did not feel like me working towards the goal that I needed to be working <laughs> towards. So that was a rough thing. Is that you know, being? You mean being in high school? Well, just doing those classes. Yeah. You know, I, I felt like some some of the information I really you know, and I like to have an open mind about it. I I always said if I'm going to do this and I'm going to learn this stuff, then I'm going to enjoy it, and I'm going to make sure that for some reason I really enjoyed biology and you know, learned the things. And I remember all the things. You know, I I could you know I could ace any exam to this day, but it's like. Even math too. It's like I loved math because music is math, but but it's like I feel like so much of it was just garbage. So so much of it, I just didn't need to know, didn't need to learn. It was a good. Te- I I I still look at it with an open mind and say that was my test for trying to memorize lyrics. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Right? I guess. Yeah. I mean, if I if I needed to remember all that senseless information, uh, it. I guess my memory got strengthened. Sure is is the, what stay in school. That's kids. a really positive way of yeah yeah that is, about classes that, you're yeah. not enjoying. Stay stay in school. <laughs> Need, okay, so needless to say, you're 19 and not in college. Yeah, I I decided not to go to college right now. Um, I figure you know we'll see how things go. You never know how things go, but if I did college, it would also be online because really? you know, I just I feel like I I wouldn't. You know how colleges can't college campuses are they're just, they're worse than high schools as far as drugs and, and everything like that yeah. go and and majority I would and say. there's just a whole lot of distractions i know networking is great networking is awesome um i'm always looking for new ways to network but but college for me it just doesn't feel like it's the it's the right way yeah um but i do i do value the education and if and if the opportunity presented itself where i feel like i wanted to go get a job that required a college diploma i would go for it yeah. But then again, I mean, I feel like you're probably, I mean, actually not probably, I know you're learning way more right now than you probably would be in college just because I can, yeah. I mean, dude, you're a bookworm. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you're self-motivated. I, yeah. I mean, I read, oh uh, man, I think it was, I think I read like 42 books last year, 43 books last year. Just, all uh, mostly related to music? All related to music. <laughs> yeah. See, that's incredible. Um, actually, sorry, that's not true. All related to music, but my, my career in music, but some of them were actually financial too. So I read, I read probably 
seven or eight just like investing you know anything like that books yeah um but yeah the the uh you know, again, it's it's all when I when I left high school, even I told myself this has to be out of commitment to self education because mm-hmm. the whole again the the only reason I didn't the only reason I left high school is sorry the, <laughs> yeah the reason I left high school is not just to get away from the dark things like like the drug the drug scene and everything like that but it was mainly to make sure that I was having more time to invest in myself invest my time. More, you know, more smart. <laughs> I love that. That, that no. was perfect. Uh, no, I'll, I'll say that again. Exactly. So, yeah. to so I'm a to, school to, dropout. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> to, to be able to invest my time in things that that better supported me in where I want to go in life. Yeah. Right. And and like you said, not just the the dark things like drugs, but also the negative people. It allowed you. Yeah. It allowed I mean, you the time to invest in yourself. There are still learn from yourself, yeah. and that's that's why I wanted to get out of the office culture. Mm-hmm. Um, because of all the negative people, yeah. they were inhibiting me working a to enhance my career and b just to get the work done. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, that's a big thing. I mean, I think if anything, negative people are all around, right? Um, and in high school, it's especially prevalent because you know I was pretty unpopular in high school, and I'm quickly realizing how unimportant that was and how happy I am that I didn't pursue that in any way because you see some of those kids that you viewed as like top dogs and and it doesn't matter where they are now it doesn't matter nobody remembers that anymore everybody's past high school now it's like you I'm glad that I left myself with something that'll last me my entire life all this education everything like that it won't go away until the day I die you know, and it's like, once you die, you have way more important things to think about. So, but like now they're the ones getting fat and lazy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you just did that in eighth grade. Instead yeah. Of yeah, exactly. I, I, pe- I peaked way early. <laughs> I, my weight peaked way earlier than theirs did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. That's where I say I peaked in high school. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is, yes, you're right. Like the ne- the negativity around people is like crazy because, you know, everybody wants to tell you, you can't do it. Everybody wants to tell you that. And you know, if you believe it, then it's true. And and that's the biggest thing is like, if I, you know, I've been told multiple times, you know, how much like, oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. Not even, not just by other people. It's actually typically the ones who are closest to you who want to keep you where you are, you know, and and that's not a knock to, to anybody in specific, but it's like, it's just to say that, you know, whoever, whoever the people are that are closest to you, they, they love you how you are. But when you try and grow, sometimes they feel like they want to pull you back. Um, and for me, that couldn't be more true. You know, it's like, I, I have big goals, you know, and that, that's the thing. I like to keep it that way. No matter what I do, no matter what I pursue, I try and shoot as high as possible because it makes me prepare for that. And then when I leave, even if you fail once, twice, 10 times, hundred times, you still have that education. That's what I love about it. And, and everything I've learned about music, it's not like, you know, I feel like in a sport, um, and, and I love sports, you know what I mean? But I feel like, like if I were to put all this energy in a football, right, you, you try your hardest. What's the best case scenario? You make the NFL, okay, right? Maybe second best case scenario, you're a really good college player, right? But then you play football through college. You haven't really made a living um, college players can get pretty popular and stuff like that, but it's like, then you get out and do you really have that much invested in yourself? Because football is something that you have it and then you don't for the rest of your life. Once you're done with football, all that work you've put in, you can't use once you're 35, 40 years old. And that's, that's an entire half of your life that you, yeah, that's crazy. you, you might've played football half your life, but now you have a whole nother half. And, and that's what I love about music. It makes me feel really comfortable about music is that it will always be there. And, sure. and it, it's, su- it's such an amazing art because like all this energy I'm putting in, I know I'll, I'll really never lose it unless I lost my life, of course. <laughs> so after seeing your year, also, I feel like when you talk about education, I feel like I'm talking to someone who's gone to like college for eight years talking about how valuable education is. You know no, what I mean? And, and it, I, it and, and I hope like, uh, I hope nobody ever takes from my conversations that I think college is a bad thing. Yeah. I think college is a great thing, but I think saying that college is for everybody is a false statement 
because, you know, p- some people need college. I think, you know, there are some things, engineering and, and certain design skills, and of course, architecture, lawyers, doctors, like you, you need to... I don't know how to do thyroid surgery. The guy, <laughs> the guy that did my thyroid surgery, I'm really glad he spent four he years learning how to do that <laughs> because I, you know, it, that that's what I'm saying is it's like that there are occupations where that really, really does matter. And, and the networking matters and everything like that too. And even for, for occupations that it doesn't matter, it's still a good experience for people most of the time. And, and you can get a lot out of it. Um, but it's just not for everybody, especially not right away. You know, yeah. that was my thing is, is I think the last thing I should have done is, is gone right from all that high school stuff into another four years of it, because it just would have made me feel like I could have, I could have done something so much more with that time. Yeah. How old were you when you went to California? So I was 17. Um, and, and I was there like on and off throughout the 17 to 18, uh, year old range. So how did that, I, you've told me this story. Of how that all came about. Yeah. And I, I mean, think it's lucky, freaking lucky, epic. Lucky connections. Well, <laughs> not really though. because Well, maybe it was your dad who I was talking to. Because, I mean, you're going to have to explain it, but basically she was taking in a... She who... I don't remember their name, so you're going to have to yeah, mention yeah. all that. But um, she took a bunch of mixes from a bunch of different people yeah. and they chose yours yeah. out of just a bunch. And it was just a demo thing. I mean, that was, that was really cool. You know, yeah. So, like, well, what and, happened? And, and this is, back this up. is really one <laughs> yeah. back, back up. Cause I don't know the story and neither does the rest of the Yeah. Story. I mean, I mean really to, to be honest with you, like LA is probably one of the most regretful times because it's, you know, it, it was something that, that you, you make it out to be so much, you know, you think, and, and I would, you know, I'd probably revel in the opportunity to go back, but on my own terms. Interesting. You know, because you go out there, um, I was given a fabulous opportunity, but again, it's just, I, I realized it's not what I'm passionate about. All right. You know? uh, again, so back up. What, yeah. What, what was, was the opportunity? opportunity? <laughs> LA. Well, so my cousin had a, you know, a close connection. I mean, we, we don't need to detail any, any, no, names, no, any no. names or anything like that. Um, but like my, my cousin had a close connection to a YouTuber. Um, and that, that said YouTuber was getting ready to release music. Um, and you know, I, again, like to review on the situation, I don't think it still happened to this day. Like 12 million subscribers, just saying. So, so she, yeah, reference, she was, she was pretty big. Um, but again, she was bigger in like the young teen world. Like okay. none of us would ever watch anything that they came. That's out true. With. I tried. Yeah. It didn't work. It's really weird. Either um, way. I mean, God, God bless entertainment, but, but like, um, <laughs> that you know, is entertaining. Yeah, exactly. No, I honestly, I laugh more at this. Um, <laughs> but anyways, it's like, you know, she was, she was, uh, you know, everything that somebody who has 12 million followers would do try and make an album. Right. And, and I think, you know, I was, she had some music recorded already, um, and ended up sending me the tracks and, you know, ours, ours was a more, I guess a little bit more produced version and the other one was kind of stripped down. And when we sent, when she, I don't, I don't even remember actually if she knew which one was mine or not, but I, I thought she did because I this sent is a it track to her. for her album. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And this was meant to be a single at the time. Um, and so she ended up sending my copy. I don't know if that was by accident um, or on purpose, <laughs> because whether or not she knew, of course. Um, but she sent it to her manager at the time, and the manager like loved it and ended up sending it to the, you know, the, the higher up people because we were working with Universal Music at the time. Um, and, and they had some people who were looking to sign her to a record label. Um, and so that's cool just to know that these people were like looking and listening to the things that I had produced, um, even though, well, not only that, but they're listening it, to it next to other like, like producers, you yeah, know, right. Exactly. Like, and I they mean, still picked yours. That's the thing is, is really getting the good sound is just about getting the good sound. You know, it's almost like it's just about getting the right people to hear it. You know, it's, sure. it's, it's such a, it's Kinda such an, who you know. Yeah, exactly. It's such an interesting industry because, you know, there are, there are a lot of these producers. I mean, a lot of young people and, and unknown people can really roll with the big dogs. And it's like, it's just kind of about pushing your way into that. And, and, and internet, social media has made that easy. Yeah, I was going to say, you think yeah. just the technology at our fingertips allows that exactly. to mesh? Yeah, no, for sure, man. And I mean, if, if that taught me one thing, it's that, you know, I... I think to make that demo, I worked harder than I ever have in my entire life because 
you know, when, when she gave me those tracks, it was an opportunity. I didn't even consider myself a producer at the time, which is crazy. I consider myself somebody who loves music and knows what good music sounds like. You're just playing with right? it. Right? And so I didn't know how to make good music, but I knew what good music sounded like. And, and I thought when she gave me that opportunity, I said yes. I was like, of course I'll do that. I didn't know how. I told her I knew how, right? Because, <laughs> because guess what? <laughs> then I went and locked myself in a room again and learned how to do it. You know, if you're given an opportunity, you got to jump on that, man. You yeah, know, I jumped it. on that hard and made sure that I made, you know, I made every second of that count. But again, even if it wasn't a success, I still have that learning experience, just like anything else in my life. So they listened to the track and they liked the track, but it didn't, it didn't. Get well, but well, then so, what happened? So the yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> artist, the artist ended up actually scrapping the whole idea. Whoa, of, whoa, whoa, whoa! Back up, back up, back up! You get sent to California. So, so I was in California actually because she ended up firing an, an audio guy that used to work for her, and the opportunity came along with we brought the studio stuff. We were working on nine more demos. Um, the, rather than the first one that I started from scratch instead of the, <laughs> in the original guy, um, who was one of Beyonce's producers, by the way, that was the funny part too. Name um, drop. cause she, she stopped, she stopped, <laughs> yeah, she stopped, she stopped doing the original, uh, the original one. And again, I don't mean to sound condescending. I'm just saying it's, it's kind of a funny situation because you know, if, if it were me who were the person making music, I'd be like, screw this little kid. Like, I don't know, but, but it was, it yeah, was an I mean, awesome, you're 17. It was an awesome and opportunity. Kicked out Beyonce. But, but the thing, <laughs> but the thing is, is I was much cheaper. I sure. was a risk. For, I was a risk for them. You know, that's for sure. Right. I was a big risk for them. Um, and, and we made, you know, we made the demos. They, they turned out good. Um, and, th and that took, you know, over the course of a year on and off, I ended up coming home a little bit, going back, coming home, going back. First time I came home was for the Eagles in the Super Bowl against <laughs> the Pats because I'm a diehard Eagles fan. And I was like, I could be home for this. Um, Wait, is that the year they didn't win? No, the Eagles beat the Patriots. Oh, that was okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember Nick Foles like catching the touchdown. No, I just don't. I just couldn't remember. I thought. That was later. So anyway. were you were you uh, doing the online high school at that time? Yeah. So I, I was finishing up at that time. I mean, you I, were I, working I, remotely in high school. I did it. I did yeah. it. I did it from Los Angeles. A lot of it. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. While in making fact, my my downtime, <laughs> my downtime in Los Angeles, obviously, because she wasn't spending all her time on that. She was making YouTube videos, and I actually did her audio for the YouTube videos too. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, but yeah, the the deal was I I I I would put the music on and everything, but I I lived there for free. Um, I bought my own food sometimes, um, unless we all went out. Yeah, but, that's cool. But yeah, if we ate at home, I got my own stuff from like Ralph's or something. I forget what they call it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's Ralph's. Well, so you got a taste of 17 of living in Los Angeles. Yeah, it was interesting. I, I mean, know it's I interesting. Think <laughs> I was a little nervous to get out into the other, in, into the scenes of Los Angeles. And the few times that I did, I realized it's not really where I wanted to be. You know, it, it's a tough thing because I think maybe if I was a little bit older and a little bit more in control of what I was doing, it could be a cool opportunity. But I, I don't think the L.A. scene was a place that a 17-year-old me <laughs> should have been. Uh, <laughs> and that, that's the true because every time I came back to Vermont, I felt like I truly had the ability to focus. You know, whereas mm -hmm. in, in Los Angeles, it, it kind of felt like the pressure was, was not good pressure. The pressure was from outside things pressuring to do things that I probably shouldn't want to do. You know, I never did any drugs, but there was pressure to, you know, and, mm -hmm. and the thing is, is I feel like my work out there was more valued as an audio engineer rather than my music, you know, and, that, mm -hmm. and that's what didn't feel as artistic to me near the end as it did kind of managing and, and the, the artist in, in question, um, you know, it, it was, it was a little tough. It was, it was interesting working with somebody who wasn't really a musician. She, she was just trying to make music. And I felt like that wasn't necessarily the most real thing I could have been working on. Sure. And I think, you know, as much as that could have been a strike for like fame or whatever, I was like, is it really worth it? You know, because that's, that's not me, you know, cause then what you get asked to do another thing. That's kind of like that. And you I mean, it's, really it's always, it. it's always helpful, but I, I'd rather do things the hard way. You know, I, I really would. Um, and I think pushing it in a genuine way, doing it the hard way, um, is, is a much better way to go for, for me at least. I mean, that's not for the long run. I mean, you want to play the long game, not the quick route to success. I exactly. mean, you, you saw an Avenue yeah. that could have led to fame, Yeah, but you were pretty quick to realize that that might not have been the, the wisest move. Exactly. And again, 
for somebody else could have been totally different. But it, like push comes to shove, you just got to be true to what you feel is right, you know, and what you want to do. I had a lot of long thoughts about what I wanted to do, you know, and I, I think, you know, my my religious journey has also played a huge part in that, you know, because I, I think no matter what I do, if I if I follow what I feel is right and I follow what I feel like God thinks is right, um, you know, God has a plan for me. Um, that's the thing is, is I push forward. I believe in, in where I'm going and, and that, you know, staying true to that is really important to me. So that's, that's the big reason I came back. <clears throat> does LA feel like the real world or does the real world feel like it's outside of LA? LA is its own thing, man. It's tough. I mean, it's all the real world and it all feels crazy at the same time. <laughs> you know, there are so many different layers to LA Whereas I feel like there aren't as many layers in Vermont. And, and what I mean by layers is like Vermont simple kind of statuses, okay. you know, because you can have the lowest of the low people in LA. And then there are also the highest of the high, you know, and they're within 50 feet of each other, but in completely different worlds, you know, Kobe's inside there playing basketball. And then you got the hobo begging for money outside on the street. It's like, it's it's surreal, yeah. man. You don't it's, see that much here. It's crazy, you know, and you do, but you just do, on but a lesser scale, way less. You know, yeah. it's like we don't we don't we don't have the Kobe's here. You know, it's like and and we actually have relatively way less people begging than than I saw there too. Yeah, you know, so it's kind of. I mean, just, obviously, there's six hundred thousand in the state of Vermont. Exactly, yeah, million. exactly. That's what I was say. Yeah, yeah, Vermont, exactly. The ratios. Yeah, are, like, yeah. but you know, Los scale. Angeles is one of those places where it's like. Everyone dreams of Los Angeles, and then you go there, and then you're like, Ugh. Eh. <laughs> like exactly. it's, it's kind of gross. And, yeah. Like there's there's no real like you know like New York City at least has like the lights and the yeah. the awesome like it looks cool. like Los Angeles just looks like concrete. You know, it's it's really I don't know. I, I mean, that's not to say I didn't love it. I mean, there are really beautiful parts of, yeah. of LA, and just like with every city, there are really beautiful parts and there are really shady parts, sure, and, and not great parts, but like. You know, I think it, w it was a really great experience. I loved being out there. Um, I think, you know, I'd love to try a different city. You know, I feel like that would be the next step. I don't know if I'd ever want to go back to L.A., but, like, you know, I've never – I've been in New York for about 20 minutes. That's <laughs> really? Got, That's it? This is when I, when I got stuck at JFK, when I went, <laughs> went out for, like, a taxi ride and grabbed food and then came back to the airport. Wow. You know? Seriously? I, You've I'm, never been in New York? Well, actually, that's not true. I, I saw <laughs> – now I'm remembering. I saw David Gilmore there. I thought it was Philadelphia. Oh, okay. I, I saw I saw David Gilmore of Pink Floyd in the what do you what is it called? The there's a theater, big theater there. No, I don't know. I have uh, no idea. Yeah, I don't know either. Well, either way. A yeah. Anyways, you um, moved back. Yeah, right. I did. did you, yeah. Were you going somewhere? Yeah, I was. I was going to steer the conversation a bit. Uh, the fact that you're a Vermont creator, creative. You're in. You're in Vermont now. Do you think you're here to stay? Um, it's hard to tell, man. I mean, family is going to play a big part in that. Um, cause that's something that's important to me too. Um, because, you know, obviously, you know, as things go right now, it seems like, you know, this is home base at least, you know, I don't know if I'll move around and jump around. I can't imagine myself living anywhere but here for now, but you never know how things are going to change. You know, I think you, you really just have to determine those things as life goes on. And as, as we were saying at the beginning of the show, with your industry and the internet, you can really do it anywhere. I mean, honestly, yeah. If you're creative enough, you can make it work in your parents' basement. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> That's not where we are. Um, yeah. You're not well, really gonna uh, lose anything by leaving Vermont behind, in the in the sense of the yeah. business and and yeah. creative exactly. thing that you're. And I mean, behind. honestly, look at all the rich people. They 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 go out. They get really rich, famous, and then they come and retire in Vermont. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, so it's like, I mean, if you think about it, I already did it. <laughs> I already did the full circle. No, but, well, no, no but. I, I always say that about uh, like going to college in yeah. high school or going to college. Going in high to school. college. Um, you I always smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always talk to people about it because everyone like everyone in high school is like, I can't wait to get out of here. Yeah. And all this stuff. And I always tell people I just skip the step because everyone comes back after, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, exactly. it's like, oh, I just never left. Um, so anyway, you come back and you and I sit down Yeah, and I'm like, Hey, I have, I didn't go to school either. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I'm a year ahead of you, I guess. Ahead. Yeah, you yeah, you're, quotes, you're older than me, quotes. right? I'm a year yeah, I'm a year older. Are you so, turning twenty one in March? Yeah. Wow. I know, isn't that weird? I turned 20 in August, and that's equally as weird. Yeah, dude, I had my quarterly life crisis at 20. Be yeah. careful. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I anyway. just turned 27. Okay, I'm I, heard, I just know, <laughs> wow, I just know crazy. for all the work I've done, I'm going to work like four times as hard once I see that number on everything. Yeah, I know, I dude. Like, I, felt, sheesh, I felt the same way. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we're both in the same kind of realm where we're not going to college. Yep. We went to high school. We're not going to college. Um, and we're like, yo, you're doing audio and I'm doing film. Mm-hmm. how can we do that because, like, because those go pr- a lot hand in hand mm-hmm. you know so you and i were like you know what do we do and, and my immediate thought was we need to just be in the same space because mm-hmm. i was in a place where you know you go you get out of high school and you don't go to college all of a sudden there's no one else like you yeah who it wants to actually do something yeah you know like I say that lightly because that's not entirely true. Obviously, there's you and I, and we're prime examples mm-hmm. of not doing that. But, you know, a lot of the people that I knew that weren't going to college or, yeah, weren't going to college just didn't do anything. Yeah. Or they went and just, you know, were like, ah, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life, whatever. And I had no one around me that was saying, and even in my friends in college, they didn't know what they were doing. Mm-hmm. I had no one who was like, this is a path that I'm going to go on. Like I knew I was going to do film. You knew you were going to do audio and we're like, we need to be in the same space. So we moved into my parents' basement. Yep. <laughs> so, um, but on top of that, six, five audio happened. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, the thing is, is and still to this day, you know, even though I'm no longer here, it, it's like, I still value the relationship we have because I, I think it's, there's something to be said about talking to somebody who truly understands what you are going through and, and what you, what the things you're working on are like, yeah. you know, and it's like just the life that we have is so different. You know, it's like sometimes you can't find time. Sometimes there's too much time and it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's an oddly busy schedule where, where things just, you know, sometimes you can lose touch, but I think, you know, all the, all the time we had spent together, we, you, I think we both learned so much. Oh, for you sure. Know, I, and I we got, did some sweet projects. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's, there will be more to come, you know, I, yeah. I have no doubt with, with, with what can, what, what you guys are doing. And, and of course what I'm working towards, I, I know we'll be working together soon, but like, you know, everything we did was just another chance for me to really take it to the next level. And I really did. Yeah. And that, that was a big thing that I was going to say when, when you were down here is like, you mentioned to me so many times that you're like, I'm just learning. Like we sat down and watched a master class together. Yeah, exactly. You know, and like, um, I remember you're like, I need to buy a bookshelf. And the next day I come down here and there's a bookshelf (laughs) filled with books. And I was like, I don't know how to read those. Um, but you're over, you know, one of the big, biggest things that you were saying is like, I'm in such like learning mode or whatever. And I think, and I think it's, it's hard because there's something called analysis paralysis. And, and I've definitely feel like I'm getting to that point because as much as I feel like you need to, you know, shove, shove knowledge in your brain, you've got to use that knowledge and nurture it and work it. Um, because you know, for all, for all the stuff I've learned about writing songs and making music, really haven't made much, <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> I make music all the time, but it's all sitting on a five terabyte hard drive and clogging up space. You know, it's <laughs> like, it's cool, but I don't, you know, I, I need to take some of that and really put the pump, the creativity into it and start working those muscles too. Because, um, that's the thing. It's like, you're right. Learning mode. That was a very important year for me. You know, yeah. I, that was, that was a huge year for me. Yeah, It was a whole year. And I definitely that's don't, crazy. I don't regret any, any time, uh, because I learned so, so much and that's so important. It's just to make sure that you feel comfortable with where you are when you start putting that content out there and creating. Um, but you know, that's the thing is, is like, you know, all that time learning and reading, it's like you, you also just, it's, it's because you have an itch, you know? And I think that that's the thing is I, I have this burning itch in the back of my head just to create, 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 and, and to pump out, be creative, pump out my own material. Um, and just again, everything even my own material is always just so that you can get better and learn because yeah. that's the fun of it you know the fun of it is is once again waking up in the morning and realizing that you're better than you were yesterday yeah um i think it was a good stepping stone for both of us for yeah. sure and obviously i haven't gone anywhere i'm still here um but yeah i, mean, <laughs> well, I think we, you're pretty well we also had some yeah. good times dude yeah, like yeah. Um, when you're in the space and, um, yeah, watching master classes and every day I'd wake up and you're eating my cereal and, oh yeah, we'd have some drum jams and stuff. Dude, that was a blast. Anyway, it was a really good time. And I think it was really good 
um, for us. But one, I think the best part of it for us was like, we now, this sounds so cheesy, but we do now have like each other in the yeah. sense of like, oh, exactly. we're, we're, we're like the only people that I know yeah. that are in this position right now. And yeah, I think that's I mean, really, where really we cool. are at least of course. Yeah. But you leave, you leave me. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I'm not hurt. No, I'm just kidding. But you left. Wait, to, but, but before you uh, deviate on that, I mean, that's, that's a lot of <laughs> where this podcast got originated. From, that's true. Is because, yeah, that is um, true. Because you, you feel not, not a bit alone, but we're all individual people. Um, that are self-motivated to educate ourselves and put that knowledge to work to really develop ourselves. And part of that is uh, we feel really segregated. We've all lost a lot of friends, I think partly because we've just grown out of them. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and 100%. And that kind of leaves us standing out on our own. So we really want to build a network of, of other creative individuals. Yeah, I think, I think like that's us. really important. You know, I think one of the things I've, I've really let go a lot of is, is, friendships and relationships, you know, and I think that's a big part of what gives us all inspiration in the first place is, is those, those relationships. And, and it's hard because all the friends, like most of the people your age, it's like, you can't spend time with them. It's, it's unbearable at times, you know, <laughs> yeah, and especially yeah. the things that they want to do. It's like, I, I can't do that. You know, it's, that's the last thing I would want to do on a Friday, Saturday night. Yeah. Um, when, when are the times that I'm free? And, and then even, you know, the people, people that you do want to spend time with, like Cam, like whenever we, whenever <laughs> we do stuff, we're like, we should be working. We're, <laughs> we're, we're it's, busy it's like, doing our own thing. It's, yeah. it's like, it's like, we, we should be working. My but, problem is always, my friends are all like, well, you can make your own schedule. I'm like, exactly. That's why I can't do anything. Yeah, that's why right I got to work Friday nights. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> no, uh, I think it's important. I mean, it's important. Cam, you know, Cam and I have at least been, been talking more recently and, and like, you know, we, what, we saw a movie or something. We've been to Chipotle a few times. Frozen. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's good stuff. Just just making sure that you're enjoying your time, too, and, and using that as inspiration, too. You know, I'm never, I'm never not on guard. I, I put myself, every morning I get up and I spend 10 minutes uh, writing in this little notebook. Um, and inside that notebook, I, there's, there's like, I spend probably two minutes writing kind of what, what I want to do for the day, how I want to get better. Um, and then I just write, you know, I write, usually write something about who I'm appreciative of, uh, somebody I'm grateful for in my life that you wake up and they're still alive. Um, but the biggest thing is, is I end it by what I call arming myself. You know, I put on my armor and my armor is to make sure that I don't let a single day go by. Even if I'm relaxing, relaxing is important. We all relax, you know, we all have downtime, but even on that downtime, I'm paying attention. You know, it's like, I'm thinking of, mm -hmm. I'm observing the world. That's important. You know, you need to observe and enjoy the world. Reflection. Because how could I make good music for people if, if I'm not even a person? You know, what's the difference? I mean, in 150 years, you can have AI making music much better than I could ever make anyway. <laughs> and so my point is, is like, might as well, you know, enjoy being human and, and really reflect on the things that you see in front of you and, and take that as knowledge as well. You know, because like all these trends and stuff happening and, and crazy stuff like it's it's unbelievable the trends that are coming out these days and and it's some some great some questionable yeah. um, but like you know it's still it's still fascinating and i look at that and and i really you know because i'm armed with that perspective i really can take note of it and use it going forward i want to round back to where i was going real yeah. quick yeah um you leave me <laughs> Sorry, but wait, wait, wait! Oh, isn't there a sad one? Yeah, it's not that. No, that's scary. I think it was. Oh, I don't know. Okay, not not any. <laughs> of course, the last one. Well, you that's hit. not the sad one. I thought there was one that was like, oh, no, that would be a good. <laughs> yeah, one to put I, on that, right that well, when he said, you, yeah, you we'll have to add that to okay, the to the queue. Either way, so you leave yep. and you start. A company with the most genius name ever. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was okay. <laughs> I, I think it's when you explained it to me, because I didn't get it at all. Musicians I had no idea. It. Yeah. yeah see, well, okay. I had no idea. Either way, it's genius. So you're holding us in suspension. Contoy's music does not, well, I'm not going to say it doesn't exist, but I guess it doesn't exist. No, anymore. Contoy's was more retail. You know, that's the thing is, is we, we really just, we, it's the same, same ownership, of course, but we changed the name to, to 
really display that we're not selling stuff anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah, we still get those, still, still get those eight year olds coming in and asking for floppy disks and stuff. But we're like, no, we don't do. Wow, that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like no. So anyway, you're not retail. We they still don't know the name. So solely is the name, and and it's a it's a music term, uh, basically solo, but community vibe right i mean you can look it up wikipedia jazz stuff it's 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 cool i mean i i liked the name choice yeah, it's too. a plural of solo yeah exactly which is genius yeah. because your whole huh. mission mm-hmm. is yeah i mean i've gotten kids in in bands and stuff together and that's 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 what they're missing you know is is that's what fueled me to to really find a passion is is working together with my art with people and really pushing myself to to you know keep up the pace with them and make, make music happen. I think private lessons are something that I never really did a lot of. And, and that's what most of musicians are in the area is just private lessons. And, and they get so turned off by that. Um, and it's really sad to see because a lot of these kids have a lot of potential. Um, and it's good that good to see them working together. Um, and that's, you know, solely is a thing that is meant for me to put myself in a situation where I can feel comfortable with the, with the amount of time that I have. You know, because of course it's hard when you need to balance a life, you know, you need to, you need to make money. You need to put the money in somewhere and and have the money work for you. And it's like, if you have no money, you're going to be a starving artist. And then, and that's not good. You know, you, you need to put yourself in a position where you really can support your music when you're ready to put it out. Um, and so that was important to me. You know, it's, it's something I started to, to keep me and several of my friends actually, um, you know, having financial stability and, and that's important, uh, because, you know, I, I get to do it. I get to work with kids that I love. You know, right now, this past few few months uh, has been super over the top busy with it, um, and I'm lucky because that's starting to slow down a little bit. Things are starting to settle down and, and become more clear. And providing it's, lessons primarily. It, yeah, exactly. And and being you know being in that business position, it's it's so hard to. It was it was a big challenge to get everything just flowing the way it needed to flow and and everything like that. There's so much that goes into that. Um, especially with so much overhead and stuff like that. But, but like, you know, it, it's great. I mean, that's something that I, I, I can always have, um, even on the side, if I needed, if I moved away from it, I could have somebody run it for me. And it's, it's just, a, it's, I, I love the fact that I'm seeing these kids grow just like I wish I had the opportunity to. So, yeah. so what are you, what are you doing, uh, with these people? You're, you're training them, you're, and then how are you building that network of all these individual musicians? Yeah, so these, I mean, so these little kids, you know, anywhere from, you know, typ- I mean, typically my ta- age range, I, we teach as young as like three to four years old, <laughs> but but my, my age range of teaching is the middle school and above range, and that's because, you know, at that age, you're ready to, to make the connections through your instrument. Um, and these kids, you know, some of them want to play like Blink-182 music, some of them want to play like, you know, jazz. Some of them want to play pop music. Some of them want to play like <laughs> death metal. And it's like, you know, that's great. We put them in the groups where they, they belong. Um, and, and we let them, you know, uh, I coach them and, and we've, you know, I've recorded them multiple times. They'll have CDs and stuff with, with their music on it. And they, they're performing at concerts. we got another one coming up at next month. Um, seems like a lot, uh, kind of like a sports team. Yeah, like exactly. And, and I think work. it's important because the one thing I really love about sports and people really love about sports is that it gives, it gives them a, a community sense to it. Yep. And, and it really shows them not only, it doesn't just teach them the activity, mm-hmm. but it just, it also teaches them how to work with people, um, how to, you know, pursue something that you love. And I think that's, that's so important because not every kid who signs up for music lessons is going to want to, be a lifelong musician and that, and that's okay. You know, I, I am different. Of course, Cam is different. You know, you're different. <laughs> it's like, we're, we're all different. We found our passion, right? But the important thing is that kids need to know and learn how to pursue these passions because maybe their passion won't be drums, bass, whatever. But when I teach these kids, I'm mainly teaching them about work ethic, about how to treat people, you know, how to work together, how to, how to, practice something you know how to feel uneasy about not practicing you know <laughs> when you've got and a that's the biggest thing is is some you know some people are so relaxed it's like parents and stuff you know some parents don't push their kids to practice and i tell these kids no matter how young they are it's like you have to want it your parent your parent is bringing you here <laughs> right right so it's not, not they they bring you here so they don't have to help you practice you know because that's what we do 
you know, we, we help you practice. But, but what I'm telling you is that, and a lot of them have gotten considerably better because they, they've really learned how to embody that and, and take, you know, really what was kind of my philosophy all along, but really should be anybody who's into what they do, you know, their, their philosophy, <laughs> philosophy, <laughs> velocity, <laughs> their That's philosophy. the most that button has ever been used. Yeah, I know, right? To take their philosophy and and really push that towards whatever they want to do in their lives. Because not, I know for a fact, most of those kids, probably 95% of my kids, are not going to even play music past college, right? right? They'll always know what they learned, but... I think the, the, the responsibility the biggest thing the they're getting ethic. from me is is the you know I what I get from my what I get from my parents when I ask them for reviews is that their kids are doing better in school is that their kids are doing better with their friends is that they're doing their chores they're doing better at home right getting better test scores it's like you know things like this is, is the is the ideal result because because music is awesome but what it's really about is music is one skill where you have to be really, really persistent if you want to be good. And so if you use that, just t use that like uh, work ethic towards everything else in life, you're going to be well off. Um, do you think that's what separates, I mean, the men from the boys, I guess, but I mean, like um, professional musicians and all that stuff is like starting at a young age in the work ethic category of how much you practice. Yeah, or I mean, I don't think, I don't think, do you think post Malone practice more than see, you it's know, it's hard to say because there are so many not, not talented and not good worker people in the industry sure. too. So it's, it's very blurred the music industry. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's, that's why I ask. It's a blurred line because you can get very lucky. You can have a daddy with a lot of money who can pay your way to being famous. And, and that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If they're making music that people enjoy, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But what's important is to realize that if you're in, in our situation and you're in the situation where you don't have a lot of money in your family, you're in a situation where you might not even be able to afford a freaking guitar, right? You just got to make the most of what you have and use everything you have to push you forward and be persistent in learning what you want to do. Because, you know, if you're not... If you're not pushing your hardest, then, then you're not going to get there. So you have, you have to at least try. You know, none of us are guaranteed success. If you were guaranteed success, why would we try? And that wouldn't be fun because then what? You know, true. You, yeah, always wanna, anything. you always want to push yourself forward. And, and you got to understand that enjoying the process of learning and pushing yourself is what it's all about. Because, yeah, wherever you are, it shouldn't be the end goal. That's what I was talking about earlier with those people plateauing. It's like they get comfortable with where they are, and they stop trying to learn. They just do. And that, that's, that's the 9 to 5, man. That's the rut. You know, why not just get a desk job if you're going to do that? Soli is really uh, <clears throat> teaching more than just music. It's teaching through music. Because like yeah. you said, you're giving lessons and building a, a network of these students, but it's what's important isn't necessarily that they become the best guitarist in the world. Maybe, maybe they just, they're a hobby guitarist when they grow up, Precise. but whatever, they're still got the skills to appreciate music and, and learn that mm -hmm. work ethic and motivation, how it yeah. all ties together. And these students, these students are so close to me now and they know I hold them accountable. That's, that's the biggest thing is, is they know I, they come every week and it's not like they're scared of me. They're not scared. Like, it's not like, they're feeling I'm, I'm one of those old yeah. teachers. Exactly. They're yeah. pushed. And yeah. I, and I've taught them to like that. And that's, that's the, that's awesome. I love to see that. I love being pushed. I more structure it like it's my LA situation. You know, I say, here's the opportunity, kid, go after it. You know, and if you don't, you know, accept it first, say you can do it, even if you think you can't and then push for it, you know, you will do it eventually. You know, I don't think Deadlines are sometimes really, really stressful on kids, and I, and I think it can hurt a lot of kids' chances, especially throughout school, when, when kids fail to meet deadlines. But if there's a little bit of passion in it, then all of a sudden the deadline's a challenge, and that works to their advantage. Exactly. If there's a deadline for a math test, yeah. they're just not going to get I think, it. I think it's tough, because at the very beginning, um, deadlines are probably a mistake for somebody who's, who doesn't really understand work ethic yet and stuff like that. I think, I think deadlines are very tough to, to push on somebody like that. But yes, once they feel like they have a little bit of fire inside them to get things done, then, then you start pushing deadlines. They need you know? a little bit of motivation. I've, I've gotten to the point where every night is a deadline for me. You know, <laughs> it, it's true. Hmm. 
It's like, I, I actually, I can pull it up on my computer after this. I, I keep a stat sheet of my entire life right now. And, and I record basically at the end of the day, every hour. Um, I write down everything I, do. I accomplish in just, day. just, a, just a, as a general idea. So then I can look at a pie chart and realize <laughs> how much time I spent on this. And this is how much time I spent on this. Sleeping, by the way, is the biggest waste of time in in the world. Um, yeah, no, it uh, sucks that you need so much of it. Yeah, when you re- when you realize that you sleep for anywhere from six to eight hours a day, it's like, oh gosh. That was that was actually one thing that I learned in college. I did go to college, yeah, only associate's degree, and and I learned how important sleep was. Sleep is very important. I will do better on the exam the next day mm-hmm. if I go to bed at a decent hour yep. versus if I stay up two more hours studying. Yep. It's just sleep is more important. I, I don't I don't even know if this is factual information, but I say it all the time that if I don't get a, like a good night's sleep, then I officially un, undid everything good that I did the day before. You know, if I, if I worked out, I didn't gain any muscle. If I didn't let it rest, relax, if I... You know, if I learned something about lyrics, I didn't do myself any good by not getting sleep because then I wake up not creative. And, and wasn't that the point is to better equip myself to be more creative? You know, it's like yeah, you're it's killing it's, your own drive. You got it. You got to recharge. And yeah, I mean, it seems unfortunate, but, you know, pretend that the life expectancy is actually just like 50 instead of 75. <laughs> yeah. So know. what is your what's a normal day for you? Oh, man. Normal is weird. Because it, it's tough, you know. I, I wake up at seven um, for for about half an hour. I I do various things such as exercise. Um, I eat. Um, you know, most of the time I like to take a shower. Um, no, <laughs> Proud of you. No, definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely. At Appreciate least, it. at least every other day, uh, especially <laughs> after after exercising. Um, but then, you know, some days I'll go to the gym, uh, like for real. Uh, but, but most of the time I'll read for about an hour in the morning. Um, I'll play an instrument of some kind. If I'm feeling the creative energy, I'll write. I've been writing a lot. Um, then, you know, typically around 11, I'll go to Soli where my studio location is. And there, you know, you just got to let the day flow there. You know, sometimes I have various things that I got to get done. Um, most of the time I spend, you know, a few hours just on logic, producing, making stuff. Um, maybe I'll, maybe I don't feel like logic one day and I start playing the drums. Um, maybe I just feel like reading, taking notes. Um, and then, you know, I typically will start teaching right now. My teaching schedule starts around three ends around seven. And then, you know, you go home, uh, Usually we'll read some more, take more notes, you know, practice some more. I don't know. Usually right now uh, when I've been doing my singing practices at night, you know, I'll I'll stay extra because there's nobody there and I can do disgusting, you know, sounding things for for (laughs) an hour and a half. Vocal Um, exercises. And, you know, uh, the studio has helped. So I've I've been able to record myself and and play it back and and really try and work on the sound of that and, and, you know, the skill there. But yeah, I mean, I, I've been just reviewing that and, and then I typically will get home, eat dinner at 930, which is way too late. <laughs> but then I'll, I'll, you know, read some more, maybe do a nighttime exercise thing because I feel fat a lot. But then, <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, go to bed sometime in between 11 or 12, depending on how I feel and then wake up at seven again. Um you know, so weekends are typically different just because I, I teach in the mornings instead and then Sundays I don't teach at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good day. You know, sometimes I feel day. like I need to leave more room for, for people sometimes, <laughs> you know, and that's a big thing that's definitely going to change moving forward is I, I definitely going to weed out some of the teaching schedule and replace that with life experiences. <laughs> yeah, sure. Which is important, but I, I, I do value the, the mechanics of my schedule right now. I mean, it's, it, it's rigid, but it works. And full time. Yeah. I mean, I, it's very full time. Yeah, I don't I don't take a lot of breaks, man. I mean, that's the thing is there's a big fat red column on that stat sheet that I was talking about that says relax time. <laughs> and no, I get really mad when that number gets really high because it takes up a lot. I mean, it, it's I you know, we all do things that you need it. Don't get me wrong. But like sometimes it just feels like like that's the thing is I have the fire that burns inside me that says Dang it, Trevor, if you wouldn't have spent the 10 hours total relaxing this week, you could have spent that all on 
five more days of vocal exercises. You know, it's like, it's like, dang it. Why did I do that? <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, but of course that's not exactly the situation, but, um, it, it does. I think it does fuel me to realize that what I'm doing at that moment in time, you know, you have to maximize your time. Like you saw me today, like waiting for Cam to finish his interview. I pulled out my <laughs> book and started taking notes, man. I mean, it's like, it's what you got to do. Like a college course level of studying notebook. Yeah. Computer. I mean, yeah. It's phone it's, yeah, all out. It's, it's, Im- it's phone, important. I, I think I, I've luckily I've, I've made a system for me that, and it's not a system for everybody, but I've, I've found a system for me to really put me on track with my goals. And if I really want to reach those goals someday, then, then that's the track I need to be on, you know? And I think like, it's, it's, there's, there's something to be said though. Like, like at church this morning, I did take time to talk to people. You know, I did take time to, to enjoy where I was, you know, that, that last service really puts it all into perspective. You know, it's like that guy could have lost his life today. You know, really he could have, and that could have been me, you know, maybe less likely because we're so young, but still, you know, you got to realize that at a certain point, you know, you got to drop the mechanics just a little bit. And, and so I do value that, that extra time, but just quick clarification we're, <laughs> yeah. we were we were all we were all at church before this and there's a bit of a medical emergency so yeah, everybody yeah. had to leave early and old old guy Crash. might have might have been having a stroke so uh yeah, yeah that that's what that uh, uh happened during the last service so it gave a little bit of uh spare time at the end as we were waiting for cam yeah. to finish something yeah, up I, and that uh it still took too long <laughs> you know, so that, that's where uh that's hey, that's okay. I read like then. two chapters, man. Yeah, yeah that's impressive. <laughs> I, was, after I, was, you, I was very glad. After you hung out and visited with people. And you saw, I, got, I even got the fitness routine in there too. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can drop a you can drop a few push-ups on a dirty church floor. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> Whenever man. you need that, that to move. That was it. A few handstands and some push-ups and we're good. <laughs> oh my God. Handstands. You're still working on your handstands. Yeah, man. I've been, I've been going nuts with those actually. But <laughs> Back when you were here, at whenever that was, you were doing handstands. I, that was like my first attempt. I remember that. Yeah, that I do. I remember that too. Yeah, I went. I went after a, a gymnast and who is now my girlfriend. So see, see if you work, if you work something. If you work at something as hard as you can, man. <laughs> no, you'll turn, uh, you'll but she's a she's a saint. And if I were to if I were to name one person who who really is aligned with that and my goals and is like you know somebody who supports that and keeps me on track, there are times, dude, I would sit and watch YouTube or, you know, NFL season's dangerous. I do like my football and, <laughs> yes, and do. but, but she, you know, she encourages me all the time to, to stay in, and stay focused. And yes, I can have the football game on, but I also have to be doing something productive while I'm watching the football game. Or at least we, we do like a workout together, you know, during the game. And it's like, okay, this is better. You know? yeah. and, and it's stuff like that. That's like, okay, you have to enjoy life, but it's also good to be healthy about it. You know? yeah, I feel you, like you got to make sure her column of the day is, is, yeah, is not, <laughs> not in the red. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, I feel like, I feel like she has a really good work, work ethic oh, too. Cause crazy. Good. Y- Cause she they both do. She graduated high school. Yeah, she? she well, she actually was homeschooled her entire. Oh yeah, and mm-hmm. and she's doing the gymna- gymnastics thing. Yeah, I mean her her family owns Regal, which is the yeah. biggest gym in the state, um, borderline one of the biggest in New England, and and they you know they're nationally recognized as very impressive because the the fact that they have the clientele that they have and the talent that they have because of the coaching, <laughs> in such a little state like Vermont, where it's like you'd figure like where are all these good gymnasts coming from? Like how are there good gym- this in Vermont but you know it's they they love it and that's their passion you know? yeah and that's it's great to see but just to say I mean she shares that same sort of drive yeah and it's and it's cool. hard because for her like I said with the sport thing her career almost is is done as a competitor right and it is done but but as as a gymnast at heart and the work ethic is not now she gets to pass that on to the to the youth yeah you, know? you guys are both teaching i never realized that yeah i never made that connection yeah and i mean again mine necessarily mine might not necessarily be my end goal mine is my transitional to save up and and make something happen right now and, sure. and try and, and also try and help and, and form a network of these kids and i love them but but yeah hers hers this is what she wants to do now for good you know and, yeah and that's that's impressive you know that <laughs> she's really nailed herself into that now i was gonna ask and you may not know but what what is next? Dang, man. I mean, I hate the 10 know. year question, but dude, 10 I, years, I, you're going to be like I'm, almost 30. Yeah, no, I know. man. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I'm really starting to feel like I could almost believe in myself soon. 
you know, I think, I think if I, if I keep pushing at, at the trajectory that I've been, you know, I could be a good writer. I could be a good vocalist and, and I could, you know, have, have a good music career because I, I don't think there are a lot of people who really could push like that. You know, I think I have a special gift, um, you know, a God given gift that's, that's helped me really push at something so dang hard. And I think, you know, there's there's one thing. Everything I've pushed at up to this point has kind of been for somebody else's, you know, somebody else's thing. And it's hard when, when you're pushing for somebody else, you can't really, you know, make the decisions that you feel are right all the time, you know. And and I and that's not to that's not to knock on anybody else, but it's like, you know, if I was writing my own music, pursuing my own career, then all the people that I love can be around me, helping me, um, and they can be a part of it. And and it's like. You know, I can move forward in that, but I, you know, I never, you never know. Cause, cause of course I'm going to start making music. That, that's my first step, you know, whether that means, you know, if, if I recorded my own music and, and a giant artist heard it and said, I want this to be my song, take it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like it's, it's yours, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but no, I'm, I'm just kidding. But like, you never know what's going to happen. You have to take it one step at a time, but all you can do is push, push hard at it. Do you ever see yourself? writing playing recording and producing your own album i mean that's that's the goal do you everything know, i think i think that is an impressive feat i think and that's something that's attested to i kind of owe it to myself to do that at this point yeah I the think amount so. of time that i've put in to learning all these different things i think i owe it to show that in my music you know sure. i have to show the side of me that loved video game music i have to show the side of me that spent so much time writing charts out for Beatles songs. I have to show the side of me that, that worked so hard on learning how to produce like EDM. I have to, I have to show the side of me that's a drummer, bass player, guitar player, pianist. You know, it's like all these different things that I've put so much time into. Of course, that's going to reflect in, in my art. And just like we all do, you know. You know, you're, you're very passionate about, you've spent a lot of time in, in motocross and, and stuff like that. So that reflects in your videos. You know, like you, you've done several videos on motocross. You've got to keep it you know, it's where the name connected. came from. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that My was the connection. Mega comfy, by the way. I meant to. Hey, wear, thanks, man. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you good? Yeah. Wrap up. Yeah, I think we should wrap up. Okay. Yeah, let me just say, guy. I mean, this was great. Dude, this I was awesome. This I was... really, you better have me back because I like. <laughs> oh, for honestly, sure. With, with the podcast thing, like this is great. But honestly, this is genuinely one of the best conversations I've ever had. Yeah, <laughs> I admit this is a wicked good conversation. That you know was I mean? the goal, dude. I'm think, stoked. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that you are our guinea pig. Yeah, and you came on first. I think that was a great, great conversation. Yeah. Uh, this totally is the direction of where we want to go yeah. with this podcast. Yeah. I would say it's a yeah. stellar episode one, and there's going to be a lot more people like you. Amen. And we'll listen, dude, you're 19, bro. Yeah, I mean, it's like <laughs> I can't wait. You know, you got this solely thing like starting and ramping up, and it ramped up quick. Yep. Um, and it's so dope. But I can't wait to. I can't wait to see what even happens in a year. I mean, think about it. We spent yeah. a year in this basement, yeah, exactly. and that was almost like a year ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's been a lot of it's a crazy. lot of development happening fast. If uh, people want to follow along on your journey and learn either more about you or, or see how you develop, how can they follow along? And I mean, go to Instagram. I don't post on Instagram a lot, but I'm really gonna, about to commit to doing that. <laughs> and, and I think, uh, you know, I think that's... Well, now that's, you're going to be held accountable. That's an important thing. I know, you're right. You're right, actually. Uh, my my handle, and, and I am going to keep it the same because of my promise to Cam. Um, <laughs> it's, it's Trevor Contoy's 6'5". I feel okay. bad because I changed mine. You did? It's, what is it now? It's 6'5 Films. Just at 6'5 Films. Oh, you didn't... There's no more Cameron Bushy? Nope. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? Well, I have the 6'5 audio one, but I don't... I feel like I had to commit. That's true. Yeah. That's fair. But see, I'm I'm probably going to, like, release music, so it's... Yeah, it kind of needs to be I don't know what you. my name is going to be, but maybe it'll... I have no idea. What's your name is... Yeah. Dude, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's another weird thing about the music industry. Yeah. Like, I mean, maybe, you know... Yeah, you're just don't name. be Lil... Yeah, I'm if probably gonna, somebody, I'm probably gonna roll with my my name to start. <laughs> that's pro you know that's a good because, place to start because like yeah. so so and and plus yeah I mean I whatever but um, <laughs> TC six five yeah there you yeah go. right hey dude uh, thanks for doing this yeah it was awesome. anytime guys I love this stuff 
cool. I think I think this is I, I think this is a good opportunity to, you know, for anybody out there listening who who is thinking about coming on the show, this is a good way to reflect on what you're doing right now and kind of reaffirm yourself that you're on either the right track or help you know these guys can help you uh if you're on the wrong track too so <laughs> but but you know it, it, this this is a great opportunity it helps to say it, it out loud talking talking is, is you know getting your thoughts out by vocalizing them is is such a great way to just really think about where you are at right now uh and where you're going and make sure that you're actually happy with that which is the most important thing for sure yeah right on brother thanks for being here thanks yeah. for coming on the show god bless you guys see you